All right, welcome back. In the last part, we were looking at this uniformly distributed load acting on this beam, and we used what we knew about internal shears and moments to derive this equation that represented our internal shear between points A and B on this span. And in this video, we're gonna actually do the same thing, but now we're gonna figure out what our moment equation is for this same exact beam. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and clean up the screen just a little bit so we have some room to work. So there you go, we have a cleaned up screen and now we can go ahead and start figuring out how we're going to derive the equation for the internal moment that represents the moment diagram for this span AB. So remember with equations, we can take cuts pretty much anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that same cut that we did for our shear diagram in the last video. And this is the diagram drawn here on the right. And we have our positive internal moment drawn and our positive internal shear drawn here. Our datum starts at point A and this cut is taking at a distance from A of X meters. So let's actually figure out what this moment equation is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sum of moments about point A and set that equal to zero and that's gonna help us solve what M of X is. So that's clockwise or counterclockwise is positive, moment about A is zero. So right off the bat we have this positive m of x value, that's our unknown. This 125 newtons is right at point A, so it's not gonna cause a moment about A, but this distributed load W is, so that's gonna create a clockwise moment, so it's gonna be negative W times this distance from A to the cut, which is x, and then the distance or the moment arm to the centroid of that loading is x divided by two, so x over Two. And then I also have this shear here at the cut. And since we are not taking a moment about the cut, rather we're taking it about A, this shear is going to cause a moment about point A. So it's going down, it's gonna cause minus Vx times the distance x, right? Because that shear is located a distance x from A. And we're gonna set that equal to zero. So now if we start doing the math, we get M of x, minus W, well W was 25 Newton per meter, so 25 times X squared over two, right? That term right there. And then we have this minus shear equation, which was 125 minus 25 X. So I'm gonna do that in brackets, 125 minus 25 times X, and that bracket times this X here and that's equal to zero. So if I keep going, m of x minus 25 times x squared over two minus 125x plus 25x squared, right? This minus sign gets distributed to both of these terms, and so does this x, and that's equal to zero. Well, minus 25x squared over two plus 25x squared is 25x squared over two, so m of x plus 25x squared over 2 minus 125x is equal to 0. And if I solve for m of x, that's going to be equal to 125x minus 25x squared divided by 2. There we go. That is our moment equation that represents the internal moments for this span. And we can use this equation to come up with our moment diagram for this span. And this is in units of Newton per, or Newton meter. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Let's go ahead and draw our moment diagram. So there is our beam, here is point A, here is point B. And we can simply start plugging in values of X here to get the corresponding moment. So M of zero, X equals zero, is obviously going to be zero, 125 times zero minus 25 times zero squared divided by two, that's zero. So we know the moment at point A is zero. How about halfway? So right at this point where X equals five, well, moment at X equals five is gonna be 125 times five minus 25 times five squared divided by two. And if you do the math, that turns out to be 312.5 Newton meter. So this value right here is gonna be 312.5 Newton meters. How about at 7.5? So halfway between this second half of the beam. Well, moment X equals 7.5 is gonna be 125 times 7.5 minus 25 times 7.5 squared divided by two. And that 
turns out to be 234.4 newton meters. So this value right here is going to be 234.4 newton meters. Now how about at the very end, this point B, where x is equal to 10? So mx equals 10 is going to be 125 times 10 minus 25 times 10 squared divided by 2. Well, that turns out to be 0. Cool, so we know that the moment right here is 0. And we also know that this moment equation is going to be parabolic, right? We have this x term here, and it's raised to the second power. And not only that, we know that this, the shape of that parabola is going to be concave down because of this minus sign. So we're actually going to get a moment diagram that looks like that. And please excuse my very bad drawing of the moment diagram. And this is all positive. So I'm actually going to clean up the board again just so we have this moment equation next to our shear equation. So there we go, we have our shear equation and we have our moment equation right here. Now what's cool about the moment equation is that if we differentiate the moment equation with respect to x, we should get the equation that we developed for shear. And that's because the shear diagram really is the slopes of the moment diagram. So let's actually do that. Let's do dm of x dx. So let's take the derivative of this moment equation with respect to x. That's going to be d dx of 125x minus 25x squared. And if we derive 125x, well, that's just 125, right? And then we're going to get minus d dx of 25x squared over 2. Well, the derivative of that would be 25 times 2, right? We're bringing the power down times x divided by 2. This 2 and 2 cancels out, so we're left with 125 minus 25x. There you go. That equation is exactly the shear equation that we got in the last video. Now, what's really cool about this relationship is that we can basically take this slope of any point on the moment diagram and go all the way up to the shear diagram and just read off the value of that slope on the shear diagram. So for an example, if we went a distance 2.5 meters from point A, so we would wanna read the slope of that point on the moment diagram, we could basically just go up to the shear diagram right at that point and see that the slope there would be 62.5 or our shear there would be 62.5. And that makes sense, right? Because the shear diagram or the shear at that location, a distance of 2.5 meters from A is positive. So we know that the slope is going to be increasing. Let's actually do that. X is equal to 2.5 meters. We can either plug this in to this equation or this equation, and we should get 62.5. So 125 minus 25, times 2.5, 125 minus 62.5, and then if we do the math, that is equal to 62.5. Awesome, so we have our shear and our moment equations for this span 10 meters, and it has a distributed load of 25 newtons per meter.